guys, um, this is the module five review video, just to recap some of the content we've learned in this unit. Um, so this is the main thing in this unit is how to solve quadratics. So we solve by graphing, factoring, the square root method, completing the square and quadratic formula. So we're gonna make sure you're comfortable with each of those. Um, remember there is more efficient ways to do it. Um, so I'm gonna try and point those out as we go. So here, this one would be most efficient to use the square root method because there's no B term. So I'm gonna isolate X squared. So I'm gonna start by adding six to both sides and then dividing by negative three. And we have X squared equals negative two, okay? Square root, remember anytime we take the square root plus or minus, if we're taking the square root of a negative, it needs to be written in terms of I. So this would be the same as I times the square root of two. Okay, this one, if it is easy to factor, we wanna factor it. Um, if it is, or if we had a, a B term that was even, we could maybe complete the square. So I'm gonna look into factoring here real quick. So four times 15 is 60. Um, so let's see, six times 10, 20 times three, 12, ooh, 12 and five. So this one actually would factor pretty nicely. So I'm gonna reduce and bottoms up. So we've got x squared minus seven x minus 60. And the numbers I just came up with were negative 12 and five. Divide by our leading coefficient, reduce and bottoms up. So x minus three, bottoms up here. All right, so once we have it factored, remember we just set each group equal to zero. So I have x minus three equals zero and four x plus five equals zero. So X is gonna be three here. And here X is gonna be negative five fourths. So those are my two solutions, negative five fourths and three. All right, here, trying to factor, let's see, I get negative 10, two and five. Nope, that one does not factor easily. Um, this one, you guys, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to complete the square just so I can do one of each method and show you. This would also be a good one for the quadratic formula because it doesn't factor nicely. But the reason why I'm eyeing completing the square is because my B is even and two goes into both of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my constant to the other side. I'm going to factor out the two because I need A to be one. Okay, and then I'm gonna leave some room for completing the square. Since I'm doing this on both sides of the equal sign, I keep the signs the same, so I'm doing the same thing to both sides. B over two is one, one squared is one, but this one is being multiplied by two, so I also have to multiply it by two on the other side. Factor, right, B over two is one, so that's what it factors to be. Two times one is two, plus five is seven. So now I'm going to isolate the squared piece, so I'm gonna divide by two and then take the square root. So I have x plus one squared equals seven halves, square root both sides. So I have x plus one equals plus or minus the square root of seven halves, and then I'm gonna subtract one. So x equals negative one plus or minus square root of seven halves. All right, this one, does not factor nicely either. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the quadratic formula. So then I've got one of each method here, except for graphing, I guess. So my A is one, B is negative five, C is 10. So here I have negative B plus or minus square root of B squared minus four times A times C all over two times A. Calculator here, simplify what's under the square root. So we have negative five squared oh, minus four times a times c. So underneath the square root, I get a negative 15, which means I'm just gonna have some imaginary solutions. 15, I can't break down into any perfect squares, so I am going to just pull out the i. So I have five plus or minus I root 15 over two, and two doesn't go into five evenly, so that is as simplified as we can go with that solution. 
All right. Okay, here were some other topics besides solving quadratics was converting um, equations to vertex form and being able to pick topics out of the graph. So vertex form looked like this, and that was nice because we could just look at H and K to get the vertex. And then A gave us that stretch factor. Um, when it's in standard form, we can also use the axis of symmetry, which remembers X equals negative B over 2A. So for this one, we're going to try and graph and pick out all these different pieces. So negative B over 2A here is negative 6 over 2 times negative 3. So negative 6 over negative 6 is 1. So axis of symmetry is x equals 1, so that means my vertex is somewhere on here. And that is the x-coordinate of the vertex then. To get the y-coordinate, we take 1 and we plug it back in. So we do negative 3 times 1 squared plus 6 times 1 minus 10. So here I get negative 3 plus 6 minus 10. I get 3 minus 10 is negative 7. Make sure I did that right. All right, so 1, negative 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And there's our vertex. Okay, so we have, um, sorry, just double checking my math there. Okay, y-intercept, remember, is always the same as c, so it's 0, negative 10. So there it was negative 7, 8, 9, 10. All right, x-intercepts, well, we can see, here's my vertex, and since a is negative, it's going to open down, there are not going to be any x-intercepts, so this is none. And because it's opening down, this is a maximum, the maximum has a ordered pair of 1, negative 7, okay? So it's a maximum, and that's the ordered pair. All quadratics have the domain of all real numbers. The range of this one, because it's opening down, is negative infinity up to that y coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 7. Okay, so this y intercept is reflected over here. We could also use our a times 1, 3, 5 pattern. Since a is negative 3, if I multiply those by negative 3, I get negative 3, negative 9, negative 15. So that means I'm going down 3 and over 1, which I have. And then I would go down 9 and over 1. I don't have room on my graph, so I'm just going to leave these guys. All right, there is our graph, okay? Now we're gonna look at writing one in standard form, converting it to vertex form. So remember, A has to be one. If it's not, we're gonna factor it out, but I'm just gonna factor on the x's. So x squared and the four x, and then I'm gonna leave space to complete the square. When I'm doing it on the same side of the equal sign, this should be plus and this should be minus. I need them to cancel so that my equation stays balanced. So completing the square with what's in parentheses, b over 2 is negative 2, squared is 4, okay? And this 4 is being multiplied by negative 1, so it also must be multiplied by negative 1 here, okay? Factor, b over 2 was negative 2, okay? Negative 4 times negative 1 is positive 4, Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So this is now in vertex form. So my vertex here is 2, 3. And my stretch factor is negative 1. Okay. Complex numbers, remember by definition, square root of i is negative 1, square root of negative 1, excuse me, and i squared is negative 1. We want to try and rewrite things in terms of i. So square root of negative 6 is the same as negative 1 times 6 underneath the square root, so that is the same as i root 6. 14i squared is the same as 14 times negative 1, or negative 14. Operations with complex numbers. 
adding and subtracting, just remember if there's subtraction in between, we need to distribute that negative one before combining like terms. So I get minus two and plus three i, the real numbers we can put together and the imaginary numbers we can put together. So four and negative two is two, six i and three i is nine i. With division, we don't want i in the denominator, so to get rid of it, we multiply by its conjugate, which is the same numbers, but opposite sign in the middle. And we need to multiply the top and the bottom by that. Okay, on the top we distribute. So we get 70 minus 50i minus 28i and then plus 20i squared. On the bottom, remember when we multiply conjugates, it's a squared minus b squared. Okay, so I'm going to get um, on the top I have 70 minus 78i and then here I have minus 20. Okay. And here I'm going to get 49 minus 25. So on top 70 minus 20 is 50 over 49 minus 25 is 24. Okay, uh, I think I at least can divide all those by 2. So if I do that, I get 25 minus, let's see, uh, 78, 49, 39, I mean, sorry, 39i over 12. And I think that is as far as I can go there. All right, absolute value, remember, is essentially the Pythagorean theorem, finding the distance from that point to 0, 0. So a here is 4, and b is negative 9, so square root of those, 16 plus 81, which is 97. So that would be our distance from that point on the complex plane to 0, 0. All right, um, that is it for the review video, guys.